How do you read into this? Are they simply just getting ready for the referendum should it come? Or is this preempting the outcome of the BBI appeal like what people are saying here? Well, uh, before I even touch on that, let me just finish. I know you want us to move quickly on some of the things that... Uh, uh, Senator Chirangai, I, I hold you in very high esteem. And uh, I liked your explanation about why the Deputy President cannot retire because he's tied in the umbilical cord with the President. But what about you, as a leader, Umsimamo? Can you take a stand as a young person with charisma, a young uh, politician who believes in democracy, to say, I am in Jubilee, but I'm resigning to run in UDA to prove to the world that UDA is popular even where I come from. So, you know, you've been running around the country to other places, campaigning for UDA uh, politicians. Why don't you campaign for yourself? Why did you take that stand? Because, you know, it's important for us younger generation to, to be people of Msimamo. That's why, you know, I take a stand, I stand there. And it should be good, because now you'll be saying, I am moving on a fact of ideology. I'm not just worried about my comfort, the money I'm getting, the, the, that comfort. So it's, something, it's, it's a challenge I'm throwing. You don't have to reply, but think about it and what message <laughs> that would send to Kenyan uh, politics. Because we want, we want uh, reality. You talk about Tekel, Tekel, you know, uh, many, many Tekel Perez. You know, the writing is on the wall yes. of the party you are in. Then why are you still in that party? I'm, I'm just talking from being from neutral, you know. I don't care either way, whether Jubilee or UDA, I don't care. But just from a neutrality and as a, as a leader in this country. This bottom-up approach and the talk about uh, politics. I remember when I did my master's on uh, diffusion and vision theories and uh, the Bretton Woods institutions and how they would come here and tell us you need to copy this and, and do this and all that. I, I'm seeing the same. You know, uh, these are people are looking for slogans uh, to basically uh, incite people feeling that you are the one. What is important in this country is the provision of basic services. And the role of government is not to give people money. The role of government is to empower economic growth. You know, in the U.S., they had the trickle-down, uh, you know, uh, economics of uh, Ronald Reagan and others. And it's good for leaders to study world economics and understand what makes people grow, the consumer factors and all that. The difference between development and growth. Yeah. You know, growth, you can say we are growing, you've poured money, you're growing. But the cost of living is also climbing. So there's no growth. Development is permanent. It's things that you can touch and see when people feel comfortable, when you've got disposable income, such that on the weekend you can take your your wife or you can take your husband and your children to Machakos People's Park and sit there <laughs> and you have disposable income. I'm a Wende Kanisani who toy more money than you could have given a fungal kumi because you've got disposable income. That's where you're coming to. And even we Mambo ya Kanisa, yeah. you know, we talk about social welfare and uh, what happens. In the US today if you lose your job, they have a social welfare system of unemployment benefit. They have it in Australia. They are of Centrelink. They have it in Canada. So that if you lose your job, you actually get money every month, you know, 50, 60, 70,000, to help you survive as you look for new work, as long as you're showing that you can look for work. You know, those are their cushions that cushion our people. It's social welfare. Yeah. But they don't give money in churches. Why? Because the thinking is this. You take a church. I went to Ghana, as I said. And in Ghana and other places, you find a beautiful church. Here in Kenya, too. Beautiful castle of a church surrounded by shanties. Church has been built with arambes and shanties. Whereas in the West, what they do, they have good churches, but those churches are built by the people who live around them because they also have good homes. So let everybody grow richer. So the fungu lakumi is enough to build a church without a special harambe from a politician yeah. who's gotten the money in questionable ways, as people would say. So it's not about giving. We want to grow. In Machakos, I've decided... I don't want to go to Harambe's for churches. I don't go. So what I've done in this budget, I have put money for social welfare for churches in my budget. So that now, churches can apply to me and say, Governor, we want to do a roof in Machakos. And they compete, we give them 50,000, 100,000, a million, two million shillings. So the churches in Machakos can benefit from the taxes that people pay so they can grow and so that people don't have to, they don't have to be beholden to politicians bribing them. So the state takes care of them. And that happens in Australia, that happens in Canada, that happens in many parts of the world whereby the churches are funded. 
coming now to IBC, I have no problem with what IBC have done. I think it's forward thinking yeah. because you have to plan ahead. What if the courts said, let there be a referendum? And what if, uh, you know, there was a sitting in parliament and they moved the election to say December yeah. and so there's room to hold an election, uh, a referendum. So what then? You have to plan ahead. The problem we, don't, we have in this country is we don't plan ahead. We know kutokuwa na kiangazi, kutokuwa na mvua. So instead of sourcing for food while it's cheap, distributing for food to different places, we wait until people are starving. Say yeah. ndo tunamuka, ndo tunakimbiza chakula, people are dying. We, we know that it's going to rain, El Nino is coming. Instead of opening the drainages, uh, fixing the roads, uh, controlling traffic, we wait until it's here when there's Madogodani everywhere, that's when you're running last minute. So I want to say that what IBC is doing is just thinking ahead. Yeah. Let them plan ahead because we want to be sure that IBC will carry out a fair election. As a presidential candidate, I want to have a fair election from a team that is thinking beyond uh, the normal uh, spaces. I want them thinking you know, outside the box, yeah. per se, so we can okay. be able to go forward.